I never know how to start these videos, so I guess I'm just gonna jump right into it. So, we are in the Art Shack, obviously. I don't actually think I've showed it on here that often, so uh, maybe it's not obvious. But anyways, here we are in the Art Shack. I just pulled out some banana bread upstairs. Bomb. I done a little bit of baking over the past like couple months but then there was this huge fad over it like I started you know what's so funny about all this I started baking I started painting a couple months like November ish of 2019 and then all of a sudden boom pandemic hits and everyone's like I need flour I need yeast I need canvas so there's like none of this product on the shelves and whatever so, I am super excited to give away a painting. Oh no! I totally left it. So, in the art shack, one thing that happens is it gets a little bit rainy. So, right now she's a little bit wet. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can definitely see. But. Yeah, if anything, she's just a little extra glossy, but I'm giving this away, and I'm super excited. I did start this back in November, and I had this dream. I was working at a corporate job, and it was disgusting. So what I'd do is I would meditate. I would put myself in this spot where there's these canyons and endless rows of flowers, which I couldn't paint because I didn't know how to incorporate that in the painting, but... There was endless rows of flowers and I would go running with my partner Rob and we'd run and we'd run and every time we'd we'd run and we'd we'd kiss he would turn into a flower and I can't actually remember how it went but but it was endless it was this endless cycle that continued to grow and bloom so I had painted this gully this canyon and Oh, I hope the paint's okay. I do spray over it with like the uh, laminate and I think it's gonna be okay. I think it just is gonna add to the effect of it. I'm gonna actually move some other things here if you wanna check it out. Yeah, this is a wet danger zone. We have a few good pieces that we're gonna move right out of the way. Here, we'll put them over here. We also got John, upside down John. Ah, oh, it's a little bit too dark. You can't see him. Who else do we got? We got Mick and ah, oh, Mick's fucking wet. Yeah, she has been raining pretty good for the past couple of days. So, and I haven't been out here. I've been working, so I haven't been able. I left the door open because it's like, fuck it, like it's not gonna matter anyways. But I've definitely had some things get wet and glues fallen off things before I used to hang things up there but then it got too wet and like this see look ah see the shell falls off and there's probably all kinds of things that have fallen but it's just like ah whatever here we'll put it over here with the rest of the hanging sticks yeah up here is where it's dry and nothing's gonna get ruined up there so yeah we'll just keep it up there I wonder how this is doing Oh, shoot. Yeah, we should definitely move this one. Oh, that's okay. We'll move this one. Hmm. Who else? So the way I tell is I, I have to look and see if there's any water leaking on the walls and then I have to remove them. Oh, these guys always seem to get wet. These are my eyes of the world. And... See, you can see past watermarks, but they're actually okay now where they are, probably because the siding of the shed is cool. But I think for the most part, everything else is good. My three women, and up here actually too, it doesn't seem to get damaged up there, so that's okay. But this is where I come to be creative, have an outlet where I'm able to express myself in 
I don't know what non-conventional way means, but I was definitely going to say it there. Express myself in a non-conventional way. I don't know what that means, but I'll say it. Sure, why not? <laughs> So, I like to just express myself, being able to add, especially with the shells and the sticks and stuff, like my little shell pieces like so, with stuff like that, I'm able to add one individual thing at a time, and with that, it, it just creates this connection, this emotion of, it feels like, almost like a channel through, where, you know, every little piece that we add onto something that is art, or passion, or whatever it may be, it just it creates this emotion it, it creates this mood and it's the same with videos now I've had a few little video clips that I've really enjoyed putting together piecing a, a theme or a mood or some kind of overall um, an overall message but it's more so a mood. I try to grasp a mood or an energy and I love that. I love that feeling of looking at something or seeing something or hearing something and it's like, wow, that is beautiful. I connect to that. I feel emotionally attached or connected or, or drawn to that. And I, I love doing that with art and, and having my own niche of art is, is phenomenal. I don't know what to call it and I've learned not to compare myself to other people and that's a big thing. At 22 years old it's very uh, difficult to not because I see so many people who are having babies who are having, uh, they're graduating from their post-secondary or they're going on luxurious trips or hiking or all these different things and it's like well, here I am in my shed, which I call the shack, but here I am in the shed and I'm playing with sticks and gluing things onto them. And it's like, no, Jessica, you have so much fun doing that and hanging out with the spiders, having them build their homes around and being able to paint my friends in this weird way. I like to paint aliens or uh, famous characters or whatever it may be. And that's okay. I need to accept where I am and I I do my best every single day, you know, accept the process, accept where I am today, and it's gotten better. I haven't cried over nonsense in a couple of months. That was a big thing, is being emotionally attached to a lot of things and not knowing where these tears come from. I would just bawl and, and not know where this energy came from. And, and once I really started to take inventory, I recognized it and that was so life-changing. To take inventory, to stop and take five minutes to take inventory. Thank you, Peter Mon, for teaching me of that. I wish for anybody who listens to this, who watches, to do something that is an emotional outlet. This art process, this is my emotional outlet. And it has helped me in so many ways, as well as yoga, drinking certain tea blends, and and taking care of my body. Genuinely taking care of my body, loving myself, giving back to myself, and it's a journey. It's totally a journey that I am loving. There's been many moments in my life where... I haven't wanted to kill myself, but I've definitely not wanted to be on Earth anymore. I've wanted to astral project away and be gone and not be around and not associate with people because of the hard times or the lack of empathy towards one another, the lack of kindness towards one another, the engagement in cell phones. I, oh, I actually got chills from that. I was at work the other day and I just walked into the staff room after break or during break and I just laugh because I look around and we're at like max two people per table so there's four tables so there's like six or eight people in there and they're all... I burst out laughing. I just laughed and walked on through. I didn't like obnoxiously laugh but... It was definitely just something like, this is so funny. I'm very old school where I take my journals with me everywhere or a book. 
recently I've just started reading, but my journals, that's something that has been a key component of my life for four years. And being able to write things out and write experiences, write what is going on in the world, but in a way that isn't, uh, it's universal. Anybody can read it and it's not, no, it's not like, it, it's not a diary, it's a journal, it's writing things in a creative way that is happening through the world, in the world, and it's coming through the lens of myself and the bias that I have, and it's so beautiful to reread things. Sometimes I'll just reread my journals. I wonder if we actually have a journal in here. I might have two. No, I have one. What's the date today? It's the 24th of September. So I might post this a little bit later, but oh my god, oh we're all over the map. So when I first started writing journals, it was very difficult to stay on topic or to be continuous with it. So yeah, I have like, like there's one September 14th. And then, oh, I know which one this is, and this is actually a good one to read. Maybe I'll read it. But I want to know if I do have one from September. I got one September 13th, September 18th, September 22nd. What did I say it was? It's not the 23rd. Because the first, well, it says in here the first day of fall. We'll read this one. Oh. oh, I rewrote it on the other side. Okay, maybe I'll write. Today is not the day. Brought back to the summer with Dixie and of Jack. I found myself with you in the middle. Leaves turned while the seasons change. Friends first, this killer of beauty. Telling me to sit back, let go. Numbing my reality of emotions through a filter of poison. How we made this deal, Mr. Demon, a demon of nicotine, asking to be fed, so I feed you. Unaware that, m unaware with my emotional relief, you claim my self-control. A friend at first, but your evil is present. A gift unwanted, so many make the mistake of this trade-off. Killer of youth, you get me, clouding the mind of breath. Collapsing the lungs of speech. That was two years ago? Two years and a day passed. So it's the 24th today and this was on the 23rd. So I have definitely gone through my fair share of smoking and a few of my videos right now are being posted of smoking and slowly that's being released from my life slowly I'm getting rid of those urges getting rid of the temptation and I never wanted to use a vaporizer because there's no point there's no point because it's just replacing the habit that's already there and I knew that once I fucking switched over it was a year and a half of fighting against it but every time that I would stop smoking cigarettes I would cry I would bawl my eyes out it'd be half a day and I would just be so emotionally just because I started smoking to numb that pain to stop crying to stop having these these uh, uncontrollable urges because before I was cutting myself before I was smoking a lot of weed before I was drinking so cigarettes is just another thing to replace that and now vaporizer is now or vaping is now the same thing and slowly my my lungs are getting better and I'm doing the best I can but it's very difficult. It has been a very difficult journey to stop smoking cigarettes, to stop nicotine entering my body because I am addicted. I am an addict and I need help and I'm doing the best I can. I, I don't need professional help or anything like that but I definitely need the support from the people I love. I read the Bible and I find a friend in Jesus and he helps me, he helps give me the words and just tell, you know, you got this, you take care of your body, I take care of my body, I take care of my body. Positive affirmations are really helping me through this and slowly I'm getting better, I'm getting healthier 
and it won't control me anymore. But right now it definitely does in some sense. Doing the best I can, you know, I, I love my, oh, I blinked. <laughs> I love myself and I'm doing my best to be strong, to, to give back to my body, to love it, to energize it, to fuel it. <sighs> Thank you all for listening, for watching. I hope you have a, oh, ah! <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful and wonderful day wherever you are in the world. It is raining here, so I hope that it is raining for other people if they need a little bit of cleansing in their life. But thank you so much for watching. See you soon.